In this video, we're going to look at the second derivative. Now, the second derivative, f double dash of x, gives the rate at which the derivative function, f dash of x, changes. Um, besides dash, we can also say prime, so f double prime and f prime. Depends on what, whatever you're happy with, either one's fine. Now, for the function f of x at the point x equals a, so you've got some function f, you're interested in some particular point, x equals a. Okay. Now, if f dash of a is 0, and f double dash of a is greater than 0, then f of x has a local minimum at x equals a. If f dash of a is 0, so it's a stationary point, and f double dash of a is less than 0, then f of x has a local maximum at x equals a. If f double dash of a is equal to 0 and f double dash of a changes sign either side of x equals a, then we have a point of inflection. Okay, So local minimum if f double dash of a is greater than 0, local maximum if f double dash of a is less than 0, and if f double dash of a changes sign either side of x equals a, then we have a point of inflection. Okay. So let's work this through with an example. So let's sketch y equals 4 plus 3x minus x cubed. Okay, let's start with the derivative. So dy dx, the first derivative, f, f dash of x is 3 minus 3x squared. The second derivative, f double dash of x, or d, d2, y dx squared, is minus 6x. All right, very straightforward there. Um, 3 minus 3x squared, and then derivative of that, 0 minus 6x. Okay, stationary points. Stationary points occur with the first derivative, f dash of x is 0, so set dy dx equal to 0, so 3 minus 3x squared equals 0. Right, factor out the 3, left with 1 minus x squared is 0, one implies 1 minus x squared is 0, so x squared is 1, x is plus or minus 1. Okay, so at x equals plus 1, the y value is 6, if you substitute back into, into here, y equals 4 plus 3x minus x cubed. And for x equals minus 1, if you substitute that back into here, we're going to end up with plus 2. So there's our two stationary points of interest. And, um, okay, here, so, testing stationary points at x equals 1, d2y dx squared is minus the second derivative, f double dash at x equals 1 is minus 6, see from here, minus 6x, is minus 6 times 1 is less than 0, so 1, 6 is a maximum. Okay, at x equals minus 1, the second derivative is minus 6 times minus 1, which is greater than 0, so minus 1, 2 is a minimum. Okay, the only other thing we need to check for now is given we've located the maximum and the minimum, is we need to just check for the points of inflection. Okay. Um, can I just say, with the points of inflection, um, what you're going to have is... Um, in, you can locate the points of inflection with the first derivative in that um, at the critical point you find that um, the first derivative um, has the same sign either side of the point. But it's clearer if you use the second derivative because then the sign of the second derivative changes sign either side of the point. So points of inflection occur when the second derivative, and that's really what you need to locate them, which in this case is minus 6x, is set equal to zero. Okay, set that to zero. The only solution is x equals zero. So what we have to do now is either side of x equals zero, we need to check the sign of the second derivative. Okay, so um, if you look at the sketch here, I hope it's not too rough, but if you look at my sketch, you see that the first derivative will have the same sign either side of that point. So in a sense, second derivative can be clearer about locating points of inflection because you set the second derivative equal to zero, uh, that tells you where they are, and then you can just verify by seeing the second derivative does change sign either side of it. So for x equals 0, uh, the y value is 4, but what we could do is just pick points either side, close to, but either side. In this case, we can just pick uh, minus 1 and plus 1. That's all right. We know they're either side of the point of inflection. At minus 1, we find that the uh, second derivative is positive, because minus 6 times minus 1 is plus 1, so that's positive. Uh, at x equals plus 1, uh, put plus 1 there, we get minus 6 times plus 1, which is negative. Okay, so we see that the second derivative changes sign either side of x equals 0. 
Okay, so it's therefore a point of inflection. Okay, and that point of inflection, the first derivative doesn't change sign. As you can see here, it's growing, growing. It's going to be positive on both sides because you can see the line slopes to the right and is increasing. So it's going to be positive gradient either side of the point of inflection. Okay, so it's, it is probably more accurate to use the second derivative to locate these points of inflection. Okay, and there we are. That's the sketch of that. And that's what we've done. But the key thing here is um, uh, if f dash of, if the first derivative at the point x equals a is zero and the second derivative at the same point x equals a is greater than zero, then we have a local minimum at x equals a. If f dash of a is zero and f double dash of a is less than zero, then f of x has a local maximum at x equals a. If f double dash of a is equal to zero, and then f double dash of a changes sign either side of x equals a, then we have a point of inflection. All right, that's it.